Greetings, fellow Conquerors, and welcome back to the Pirates of Pomerania and EU4. And today, we're going to be basically biding our time a little bit. However, interestingly enough, we can, if we want to, fabricate a claim on the Livonian Order. And at this point, it's kind of like, why not? Um, the only thing we have to worry about at this point is, again, uh, the ridiculously low coalition cap. Now, oddly enough, taking all that land, you know, taking Danzig from... Uh, the Teutonic Order did not give as much aggressive expansion as one would think uh, for such a thing. Now one thing we'll be looking to do is uh, attacking Poland. We would very much like to uh, attack Poland in sort of a, a massive war. We are, we are allied to most of Poland's natural enemies, being Bohemia, Hungary, and Muscovy. And so, yeah, we're basically going to be looking to take them out because they are our biggest neighbor. And being our biggest neighbor, it would be in our best interest to defeat them first, um, so as to, you know, help us consolidate our own strength. And, uh, another, another added benefit of this, of course, is that, uh, go ahead and improve relations here. I'm always, I'm always ah uh, and umming because, uh, I'm, you know, I'm looking at other things while I'm trying to talk, and it's not a skill that comes naturally. Why are we making so much money? Uh, war reps, apparently, from Brandenburg, I think. I think. Uh, anyway, we can repay a loan, and I think we should do that. Get rid of some of the interest. Uh, somebody commented in the last episode, a lot of people made a lot of comments, and I, I definitely agree that going into Poland is probably our best idea. <laughs> of course, if we really wanted to go crazy here, what we could theoretically do is just, uh, allow these Danzigian separatists to break free and form the free nation of Danzig, and then we could play as Danzig. But, we're pirates, and that's important. Somebody in the last episode, uh, in the comments of the last episode actually mentioned, um, you know, hey, are we supposed to be playing as a republic? And the answer is, well, yeah, we're gonna be a republic, but the problem is, uh, we have to get the ideas first to actually become one, so... I'm probably going to go with the uh, adopt aristocratic administration option and become a noble republic uh, because of the morale of armies bonus that you get. The tolerance of heretics is also quite nice. And while the merchant republic could get us more money, I definitely think the noble republic would be interesting uh, because of, you know, we we're pirates, we've got this code of honor, we're going to be noble pirate German Prussians. It's the weirdest thing you've ever heard of, and yet it's still just so, so awesome. But this does raise an interesting uh, concern, because I didn't realize that to become a noble republic, we must have trade income of less than 20% of our total income. Now, that is possible. That is possible to do, especially given that uh, we currently have no light ships anymore, because they were all sunk um, in that last war. So, we'll definitely be looking to get more light ships in the future. But for now, we're going to have to bide our time, you know lower our army maintenance, make some, make a little bit of money back, that sort of thing. Now, one thing I'll be interested to see is, after we fabricate this claim on Poland, uh, how, you know, are we going to be able to get the war that we think we want? Because their only ally is uh, Lüneburg, which is this one province minor here, uh, who has a lot of allies, admittedly, but who uh, is not particularly threatening on his own. We do have 73 development already, which is pretty sizable when you stop and think about it. The problem is that we have a lot of autonomy in our provinces, which is seriously hurting our uh, our force limit and things of that nature. But we have uh, just embraced Prussian culture. And something I, I kind of missed about this is uh, the like automatic accepting of cultures that are large, because when you can manually set it using diplomatic points, it's kind of like, eh... Yeah, it just doesn't feel doesn't feel right. I don't know. Maybe that's just because I'm nostalgic, but yeah, I don't know. Could be a lot of things. Now, if we were to attack right now, Muscovy and Bohemia would both join. Uh, however, I think that Hungary is very scared of Poland. If I had to guess, let's see. Let's look at uh, Hungary's opinion of Poland here. They're actually, like, moderately friendly towards each other. 
Although, Poland has rivaled Hungary, so you would think that Hungary would care a little bit more. Uh, that being said, I don't think that we have the forces at the moment to attack Poland, um, unfortunately. <laughs> like if you look at Poland plus Lithuania's army, it's pretty sizable. Poland has about 20,000, which Bohemia matches, but... Let's see, Lithuania, on the other hand, Lithuania is the scary one who has uh, 20,000, but a force limit of 35. Now, it's possible that once Muscovy is large enough that we could try for a, a war, but it, again, it would be a very, very taxing affair, and so we may just have to bide our time, spend a little bit of time expanding slowly. Um, interestingly enough, Denmark has actually allied Muscovy, which could be very problematic for us here. Now, another thing for us to consider here is that Poland is only Tech 3, and so is Lithuania. And so attacking them right now, like this exact moment, would actually give us a pretty substantial advantage. However, we have no manpower, and we would be relying almost solely on Bohemia in order to actually win this war. Now, Muscovy is sizable, but they're out of manpower, and they've only got 24,000 troops. So, I just don't think it's in the cards for us right now, unfortunately. That being said, I am going to fabricate a claim on Mecklenburg, on Rostock, because we'd very much like to uh, begin expanding again, even though the aggressive expansion in the HRE is pretty ridiculous, and the lack, and the opinion damage that you get every time you take a uh, province is also pretty astounding. I mean, we still, we're only getting one back a year, so when you think about it, you know, um, if you take 16 provinces in the HRE, that's like your whole game, basically. <laughs> that's your that's your whole game. Now, for some reason here, oh, Ver Verden has attacked Luneburg. I don't know why Verden has done this, but he is understandably getting his butt kicked by Poland. It's like we've got the Muscovites having some fun down in Crimea. Don't take that out of context. We're gonna get take a loan, or sorry, we're not gonna take. We're gonna get rid of a loan, and then we're gonna start building uh, a light ship fleet again, because we would very, very much like to uh, have that income again. Now, because we own the provinces that we own, we're actually making a sizable amount of money. Um, and in addition, the war reps that Brandenburg seems to keep making are pretty nice. Uh, I am very interested to see what happens next here. It looks like Lunenburg might actually be able to take some provinces from Brandenburg, and we ourselves are probably looking to attack Brandenburg fairly soon here. So I think we're getting I think we're getting war reps from <laughs> Who are we getting war reps from? I think it's just Brandenburg, isn't it? Yeah, Brandenburg's just looting, like, all the provinces, apparently. Just getting tons of money from it. Alright, so we just lost one stability, regardless of what we do. So we're gonna bump stability before this event happens. And we could get 1% missionary strength, uh, plus 5% technology cost, or the opposite, minus 1 missionary strength and minus, or minus 5 tech cost. Obviously, we're gonna take the tech cost here, because we don't have any provinces to convert. <laughs> Wow, Brandenburg is certainly holding the line ridiculously well, all things considered. To the point that it's actually making me feel confident enough to attack. Now, only Bohemia would be willing to join us here. But that being said, uh, Poland and Lithuania are both still Tech 4, and honestly, we could, uh, we could smash them pretty well. I'm going to hire another cavalry, though. Uh, I don't believe any of our opponents here will have a navy to speak of, so we can pretty freely uh, trade still. So we're going to train that infantry, and then we're going to declare war on Poland, because uh, this is basically just a land grab at this point. Although I am surprised that uh, Bohemia hasn't fabricated any claims yet. 
Now one thing we are going to do is start fabricating a claim before the war actually starts. And we'll start improving relations with Muscovy. Even though I would very much like to get them in the war, I think that we can just, if we go now, we can actually uh, win this pretty effectively. Uh, especially once I get this uh, cavalry up and running. Okay, it looks like uh, they've peaced out. But they're still at war with Verden and Munster. And those Polish troops are just going to chill there. We're not going to give you military access. Nope. Not happening. Now we do have the other, that other problem, which is that our manpower is still not particularly high. Let's see, I'm looking for the ledger. Buttons, buttons, buttons. So Poland is completely out of manpower. And Lithuania is extremely low on manpower. Bohemia, on the other hand, uh, is almost full on manpower, although they are above their force limit, which is really interesting. They have a lot of cavalry, though. Now, Hungary is unfortunately in another war at the moment. They're <laughs> with Baden, or Baden, however you pronounce that. Um, just, just the one province. So, actually, this siege won't be too much longer here. We could actually get uh, Hungary potentially in this war, and if we do that, this would just be a complete... Uh, wipe for the most part, I think. Especially since they're out of manpower, so uh, just just need them to finish up this siege, and then we can invite Hungary, take all, and, and if we got Muscovy as well, that would just basically be the death toll for for Poland. Right, Thirty-five percent. Come on, you can you can win this siege. Maybe maybe Hungary would be willing to join early. Hmm, maybe. Nope. Still fighting in another war. Uh, and of course, we'll have to worry about the, the terrifying uh, Lunaburg. <laughs> uh, of course, every every month that we spend is another month that they get closer to uh, Military Tech 4. So... Of course, this is probably going to be the longest siege ever, now that we actually need to get hungry in a war. <laughs> hey, there we go. Can I get a peace deal? Sweet. Oh, now they have a defensive attitude towards us, and they don't want to help. <sighs> Come on, guys. Wow, Muscovy has so much war exhaustion. There are negative 35 reasons for war exhaustion. That has been a painful war for them. Now, unfortunately, the Polish army and Lithuanian army has been recovering while we've been kind of sitting around doing nothing here. We're going to go back to pirating, though, because that's what we do. That's what we do around here. We pirate. And we can actually afford another ship, so we're going to build it. And we really, really wish that our uh, manpower... Not our manpower. Our force limit was higher. This would just be such a dangerous war without Hungary, especially because they're defensive towards us all of a sudden. It's just it's just so dangerous. Well hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Let's fight a war with Poland. Let's do it. Alright, so there's that, uh, there's that advantage we have. Now, Poland, um, in the shock phase is going to get completely wrecked here. Like, if we just slow this down here, because we've got a four shock advantage. They're taking a minus two for crossing into the province. We're killing them ten to one. This is absolutely absurd. Poland, Poland, I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at that. 
Look at that. That is just nuts. Now, I don't think that was a stack wipe, but you can see the casualty differences. Uh, pretty impressive there. And with Bohemia's help, we may actually be able to get away with this war, pretty much. <laughs> All right, so next month we're gonna get a thousand men back in the lines, but we are we are gonna let uh, Bohemia do a lot of the heavy lifting here, and we're kind of just gonna play a support role um, in this war because we really just uh, we need Bohemia's you know arm strength to kind of get us through this war here. And there's the Lithuanian army. We are of course going to uh, assist, even though Bohemia is taking a minus one. We really just uh, we need to get that advantage. We need to win every battle. Gonna kind of carpet siege a little bit here on these provinces that uh, don't have any forts on them. Just to cause a little bit more war exhaustion, make them more likely to surrender earlier. That 0.5 morale advantage is of course proving extremely vital to our efforts. Those are woods, so we would rather not have them defending. Are they going to fight us? No, they're moving to this province. These two provinces are connected? <laughs> like, barely. I would really feel much more comfortable if our force limit were higher, but it is not, so... Alright, looks like we've got another battle coming up. Alright, we can actually pick up the next military tech, and uh, naturally we're going to do that to get better combat with, better infantry shock, uh, better supply limit, and of course, better infantry themselves. And I believe we're going to go with the uh, Gallo Glide infantry. Uh, just for that extra morale damage, uh, considering that our morale is so high at the moment. I'm going to move into friendly territory for a little bit just to get our morale back. Now, they are besieging our capital, but that is basically okay because it's a coastal province. And by the time that siege, we're going to basically be able to, like, take most of their provinces. So. Hungary would accept our call to arms all of a sudden, so let's call in Hungary. Let's get another 26,000 troops. Uh, another 26,000 Tech 4 troops. Now, uh, Lithuania has gotten to Tech 4, so this is going to be a little bit more difficult now, but with Hungary's help, I think that we can win this war. If they'll actually move in to help us. <laughs> Alright, there, there Hungary goes. I don't know what he was doing before, but... Alright, we're going to help Bohemia win this siege even though we need to win the siege by the actual war goal. And uh, maybe we can sneak our army around, go take the war goal, and then start sieging down that area. Although I would really like to help in battles against this crazy 34 stack, uh, where Hungary is now taking a minus one. Eesh. We're going to move into assist. Because that is a lot of troops. We don't, we don't like that minus two, but... I think, I think we need to help so that we win the battle, get the war score. Yep. Now we're in, and I believe that's going to be a win for us. Excellent. All right, now let's go take the war goal. This could be a long, bloody war. This may not even turn out in our favor, but I'm, I'm feeling confident. 
Alright, so we could have six peasants rise up in Stettin. I would love to use this to deploy, like, uh, defensive rebels. Like, if they go sit on our capital. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Watch this. So, six peasant regiments rise up in Stettin. And now, uh, Poland's gonna kill our rebels for us. <laughs> the defensive rebels. Go, my pirate peasants. Poland almost losing. Almost losing. All right, Bohemia is going in to attack Poland. Uh, Poland still low on morale after losing or fighting off those vicious... Uh, we're going to call them pirates. It said peasant rebels, but let's be honest. They're pirates. They're pirates. You know they're pirates. That rose up to defend their home capital of, of Stettin. Uh, Royal Marriage with Muscovy. Uh, sure. They would actually accept the call to arms now, so we are going to call Muscovy in as well, because that's the dream. They can besiege Lithuania from the side to distract them while we take the main war goals here in Eastern Europe. Now, we do have to worry about these Danzigian rebels popping up, but for the most part, I believe our allies are doing a great job of actually engaging the enemy here. Let's see if this Bohemian army can clean up. Yep, looks like they are going to be able to defeat the Lithuanians. And I think that this is going to be a pretty, pretty huge success for us here. Unfortunately, disease outbreaks exist in this patch, and they are horrible. <laughs> As always. Now, thankfully, Lüneburg is not doing the smart thing here in taking back the war goal. Although soon, we will have uh, control of the fort. Uh, especially with this blockade. Yep, there's a food shortage, down to negative 21%. And the Muscovite army is moving in. I believe those are all mercs <laughs> at this point. <laughs> and the Hungarians are doing a good job getting close to winning a siege. We're carving up Poland like a turkey here, really. Hopefully an army doesn't just come out of the darkness and, you know, bushwhack our army here. Now, I would start fabricating a claim on the Teutonic Order, except if we get caught, that's another, you know, five aggressive expansion. We don't want unnecessary aggressive expansion um, because there's just so much in the HRE, but we are going to get a lot of provinces here. Including ones that we probably don't even deserve. Let's see. Alright, we're at 14% on the siege. It could be a lot better, but having that siege general... This general... What, what is this man's name? Uh, Walter Mierke. He's a... He's a badass. Walter. He'll be... He will go down in, you know, history. He's one of the finest uh, pirate captains. Sorry, pirate generals we've ever had. Unfortunately, the Danzigian separatists are rising up. Yep, that's going to be a problem. Uh, they do have a 2-1 general... And we would love to do something about them, but for the moment, that's not really going to be an option. Uh, thankfully, we can quash this rebellion pretty soon here. We just really, really need to win this fort. All right, we need to move in, and actually, actually, Hungary's got that handled. All right, we've uh, we've also crushed the uh, Polish ship. I would, I would say fleet, but let's be honest. Alright, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to go get into a defensive posture here in Stolp and wait for these Danzigian Separatists to kind of come to us. Or at least give us a little bit more time to get some manpower. Now, one thing um, I could do here is get some Merc Infantry. It will be costly, but that'll help us uh, get the advantage that we need to 
um, overcome these re you know rebels. Don't worry, soon you will understand the the strength of being a pirate. You Danzigian separatists. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that Poland. Getting carved all, all the pieces. Alright. Now we're going to fight these Danzigian separatists against our better judgment, of course. We do have a morale advantage and a shock advantage on our general, and so I think that is going to win us the battle, although we were taking a lot of casualties as a result of this. Now we are going to keep these mercs. But what we're also going to do is take these two units and consolidate. And that should lower our... Um, it didn't It didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Okay, here we go. Consolidate those as well. Okay, now we should be below our force limit again. Perfect. Look at all this green pirate land. Oh, we should probably take the province back from the separatists, yeah? <laughs> It's been a pretty bloody war. I wish we had that newer feature that shows like how many casualties there are at the end of a war, but yeah, this has been a pretty pretty good beneficial war for us, honestly. All right, but now we need to go we need to go uh, looting. Let's go let's go looting. That'll help us pay off some of our problems here. Looks like Poland is ready to surrender. And we will we may be ready to take them up on that surrender. Once we uh, loot this province a little bit. Alright. Now, interestingly, Bohemia didn't want, like, any of this land. So, <laughs> we don't necessarily have to give them any. However, uh, Muscovy would love to have uh, Smolensk. So, we'll probably be giving that to them. Uh, we're going to let Hungary finish a couple of sieges. Just some of the smaller ones. And then they gave all that land to us, so they don't even want anything uh, from this war. Which is just really, really funny. But let's see what kind of peace deal we can get here. Alright, so we could potentially take three provinces here. All three of these provinces are... Well, sorry. Two of them are Prussian. And if we took this province here, uh, Lubuz, uh, that would actually... I, I don't know why I said that like a... French or something, but this is a this is a nice province because it's Saxon, and so even though it has high autonomy, uh, they are the they are an accepted culture of ours. So it would be likely that we could stop a rebellion uh, from even happening there. Although it, it's also likely that there's still a lot of separatism left over from when these co provinces were recently conquered. So that could be a potential risk for us for sure. But why not take all four, right? Why not get... Let's get a little bit greedy here. Um, I'm not sure how much development that is. How much development? So that's like... 18... 31... That's 41 development. That's that's pretty solid, honestly. So we are going to take war reps. We will give Muscovy Smolensk, since he claimed it and since he helped. Now, why am I getting the aggressive expansion for him taking Smolensk. That is weird. That's really weird. Okay, so if we only take these three and give Muscovy Smolensk, uh, Muscovy would basically be our friend forever at that point which honestly at this point I think is more important than getting a nine development province and risking a coalition so we're gonna do that we're also gonna take all of Poland's money at 183 ducats uh, which they would almost not accept and this should make it pretty easy in the future to defeat them uh, considering we did just take you know a pretty decent chunk of development from them um, one thing we could think about I don't want to just necessarily finalize this already. Um, it would take a hundred percent war score for them to cancel being a subject of, or cancel Lithuania from being a personal union partner, and it would also cost us a thousand diplomatic points 
to do so. So I think we're just not going to bother with that. But I think that this was a pretty good war. And honestly, I, uh, I'm i happy that we beat Poland. Um, I don't think that this is the end uh, by far. I think we need another war before Poland is going to be uh, truly vanquished. But all that being said, I think we did pretty well. And hopefully uh, we're going to be able to defeat these rebels that are inevitably going to pop up uh, after we take this land. But we're going to have 183 ducats with which to purchase mercenaries and things of that nature, so I think we did well. I'm, I'm really happy with how this war went. So let's go ahead and uh, sign the peace deal. We gained five prestige because reasons. And our force limit went up by two. That's wonderful news. Uh, one thing we can definitely do now is finish building these two light ships that we want, and we can go pirate. And also, I believe we can build a, uh, a trading center in our provinces, uh, which in Danzig is a whole heck of a lot of trading power and a whole heck of a lot of money uh, in the Baltic. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But anyway, this episode has gone on for quite a while. We have eclipsed our rival Mecklenburg, and hopefully now we can rival Poland. Nope, we are still too weak to rival Poland, unfortunately, but we will uh, rival the Teutonic Order, because they're basically just free land at this point, even though they're allied to the Livonians. Uh, however, that could be an interesting avenue of expansion for us, but all of that is going to happen in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed our time here as the Pirates of Pomerania, as we continue to expand, taking little by little more of the coastline, and hopefully prepping us to eventually become sort of more of a colonial empire, uh, despite these sort of really aggressive opening moves. But that'll have to happen in the future. So if you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like and uh, comment if you have any thoughts on the direction the campaign is taking, of course. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And I'll see you on the next one.